Thanks for attending the February meeting. I'm very happy to have all of you here. Um, we have a few things we're going to discuss first off, and then uh, we'll, of course, open it to questions and comments. Um, I did want to uh, mention a couple of events we've had recently, which I thought were really cool. Uh, we had uh, last week was Metaverse Fashion Week, uh, which featured uh, fashion designer Jonathan Shimkai uh, partnering with Every Realm and Blueberry Entertainment. Uh, to create a runway experience in SL featuring their the Real World Spring 2020 or 2022 collection. Um, I'm still in March 2020, so apologies. Um, but uh, it is in conjunction with New York Fashion Week. Um, if you do want to see what the event was like, uh, I'd recommend checking out uh, that YouTube video. Um, we also had a, a virtual presentation with Chris Gore of Film Threat. Um, and the cast and crew of the movie The Spine of Night, which is a horror fantasy that uh, featured Lula, Lucy Lawless and Joe Mangiello. Uh, we're doing a few of these events every so often. We're really excited with them. And uh, keep an eye on our blog for more. Um, that's at, uh, you know the address, community.secondlife.com. But uh, we've been doing a lot more of these lately, and they're a lot of fun. Yeah, same Izzy. Joe Magnano is a pretty big name, so that was really cool to see that. But yeah, again, they were, you lose the others. And they were both on the panel in here. The commercials that uh, Joe and Sophia do together? I have not. You have to do a Google search for uh, Sophia and Joe Manganiello uh, commercials. I don't know if it's a real commercial or if it's like a funny or die type commercial, but they do kind of a thing like um, flying this airline after having flown this airline is like dating some guy after having dated Joe, you know, kind <laughs> of a thing. It's so funny. Well, I'm going to touch on uh, the next topic we have, and that's recent updates to our wiki.secondlife.com. Uh, we've done a couple uh, changes, and this included a much needed update to the software running the wiki, as well as some visual updates to match our current branding. There may still be some issues to iron out, including some issues with the scripting section of the wiki. So please do take a look and provide us with any feedback. And if you run into any issues, uh, definitely contact support. We'll get you straight now. Yeah, I was very glad to see that updated. It's been a, a long time running um, for that. I know the software was getting pretty creaky. <laughs> I also wanted to add, um, you know, we're uh, with that update. Uh, there's a number of other uh, updates. We discussed them a bit last month. Uh, they were shared on blog in January. Um, yeah, exactly, Draconis. Um, that's an issue. Uh, there's also some issues with some of the way photos are showing up. Um, we're aware of them, unfortunately, or fortunately. Um, but as we shared last month, there's a number of other updates that are in the pipeline right now. I just wanted to list some of them up for you so you all were aware of them if you weren't already. Uh, we are seeing, um, we don't know ETAs on these, but we are seeing some of these coming up probably pretty soon. Uh, for one, the return of Premium Plus, which uh, will be a new up an account upgrade option with additional features and extras. Uh, we don't have a lot of information on specifics on that, but that will be announced pretty soon, I suspect. Um, we are working on a mobile viewer uh, to enhance and improve your Second Life experience. Uh, we're improving the group chat reliability. We know that's been an issue for some time. Um, there are some viewer and script performance improvements, uh, some of which we've already come out with. Uh, some of them are still upcoming. Uh, there's some new user avatar customizations and improvements coming up. Uh, an updated mesh optimizer, which should be good. 
Uh, we are still getting some search engine improvements. Some of those should be coming up pretty soon. Um, you've already seen the the redo of search and how it looks, but some of the functionality stuff is being worked on now. Um, and some improved materials and terrain work, as well as some additional web marketplace variants. Um, again, there's not a lot of public information on these as of yet. I don't know a lot of information on these as well. But um, keep an eye on our blog, community.secondlife.com, uh, for information on these additional features that will be announced and so forth. I also wanted to drop in, um, if you ever have an idea uh, that you thought might be uh, really cool in Second Life, no matter how big or small, uh, we always recommend dropping it in here. And that will take you to the Jira feature request page where you can go ahead and submit it. Uh, don't be shy if there's something that you say, you know what, you guys introduced this, but it'd be really cool if it had this kind of a change to it. Go ahead and send it in. and. Um, We'll definitely uh, have the review team take a look and um, can, of course, uh, guarantee, uh, you know, any changes or uh, implementations, but uh, they do get reviewed regularly. Mark, at this point, I'd say the knowledge base. Um, the wiki has a lot of older material. Uh, the knowledge base is generally a bit more modern because we didn't do a lot with the wiki for many years because of software issues. Um, so still the knowledge base is the best. Excellent, Dantia. Thank you. That's also very thorough, very easy to read. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, with Jira, the adage of less is more is not accurate. More is more. And even if you can't uh, put into words what you'd like to see, you can always create kind of like an image, um, maybe uh, oh, like a Photoshop, uh, a visual rep representation of what you'd like to see. You can attach that as a, uh, as a screenshot and um, that could work as well. And for anyone who is following uh, our featured news page, we'll touch on that uh, as we always do. Uh, we recently released a blog that will be having a new uh, feature that some of you will be excited of. So we're going to be introducing an additional way for you to protect your account. Uh, you will automatically receive an email to your email address on record uh, with us 
when we detect a login from a new computer. Um, this is, of course, uh, pre-existing technology. If you have any kind of other online services like Roku, Google, they do this. Um, they'll send you a notification that they um, recorded, uh, you know, an access from a different machine. Um, of course, if this was you, you don't need to do anything. Uh, if not, we will help you secure your account via support, and you can learn more by reviewing that blog, uh, which is very well worded. Yeah, it'll yeah. give you a whole idea of what the what it looks like to get that message. <clears throat> I like that. Hey, Vic, see me jump over you. Oh, no worries. <laughs> And you can always uh, make sure that you're receiving all of the proper uh, messages from us by visiting this page. There will be a little part that will tell you if your uh, email address is verified. Yes, Panther, go for it. It's a good question, Panther. And without saying too much, I know that they're doing a bit more with the authenticator and looking at more options with it. So I hope that that's going to be part of that. Hello. Can I ask an idle curiosity question? Sure. Absolutely not, Torek. Never. No, you know, I like to I like to be a nosebag with these things. Does the current situation in Russia have any impact on SL and Tilia? As in, are Russian accounts prevented from buying and selling Linden dollars or US dollars? Not that I'm aware of. Um and I don't think we would be aware of uh, anything unless it was major, I want to say. Um, but as far as, yeah, that's the, we really don't uh, delve into the political climate unless it's something that majorly affects us. And then we okay. would also address it, you know, by the stats. Well, if it's something worth addressing or that's been, you know, determined as such. Other than that, I, I don't think, unless Izzy, you have something more to add to that? Uh, just that I think what Torek's referring to is the new sanctions that are coming out, mm -hmm. and I don't believe that they affect the way we're doing things yet, but of course our legal people are keeping an eye on that to make sure that we're in compliance. Nosy is good. But yeah, I also don't. I've not heard anything specific at this point. We'll obviously see how things go. That I really don't know, Danita. Uh, that would be or Dante, uh, that would be a um, 
uh, probably better at the server meeting, maybe. But um, I don't. I don't think there's really any information that we have on that at all right now. It'll probably be remade. Oh, one thing I wanted to jump in with, um, just as a reminder, I, I think we mentioned this last time as well. Um, you may have recently seen emails from research at secondlife.com um, asking about opinions on Second Life, uh, with possible rewards and that kind of thing. Those are legit. Um, those are real. Um, we're just looking for ways to improve Second Life, uh, You know, casting a very wide net out there. Um, of course, if you see messages asking for your password or things like that, no, those would not be real. But um, as far as ones from that address um, asking for your opinions, yeah, those are legit. Hey, Xanabar, uh, can you uh, describe a little bit the seizures um, you see? Or is it your viewer locking up, um, things not rendering properly? Do you have any more uh, clarity on it? Uh, good idea, Wendy. Okay. Yeah, so that sounds like um, if you just win like uh, Wendy recommended, that might resolve it. Whenever I hear of border crossing issues, my, my eyes just start twitching. <laughs> Yours and mine both fix. <laughs> And yeah, I know some of the transitions between the lights can be a little uh, jarring at times. I know I've seen a few where for a brief second my entire screen is white, which is very challenging. Ooh, that is an old one, Torek. That's very old. I thought we uh, obliterated that with our update to uh, border crossings. Ah, uh, shucks. Torque, if you're able to um, gather as much intel as you have regarding that and um, drop it into a JIRA and um, just uh, poke Wendy or I with it, so maybe we can start well, trying to reproduce it. That. Oh, yeah. and Mon Monty accepted it, but it, it's evolved because now you'll cross the region and you'll go right to the sea and then about 30 seconds later, instead of disconnecting, you'll go back to where the region crossing is and you have crossed, but you'd have still walked off the edge of the world first. But Rubber banding. 
Yeah, uh, uh, it's extreme. Yeah, I have put a duo in, but that was for disconnects with intra estate crashes. And I've and Monty says he realizes it because it happens to him, but I don't, I haven't actually put a, one in specifically for that if it means if you know what I mean. I would, yeah, especially since we uh, one we came out with a pretty big update that um, made border crossing a lot easier, and two. We were, act, or we still are actively looking for any feedback, any issues that may still come across it. So, yeah, definitely something that specific. Um, if you could, Torque, uh, just drop it into a Jira. Uh, any screenshots you have, uh, any kind of visuals as well. Uh, time and dates uh, also help, as well as region names. So, we can come out and try to reproduce it and uh, see how things look uh, in our environments. Um, that would be very helpful. And then just, uh, Oh, uh, Wendy or I with it. Okay, we'll Thanks, Dark. Any other questions or anything we've discussed so far or any other issues? Feel free to just chime in. Yeah, Lucia, there's always a chance that you're entering a region that hasn't been restarted in a little bit. Um, but we're trying to iron out those kinks. Yeah, there's definitely an emphasis on uh, improving um, the border crossing. Is everyone here familiar with our uh, bug reporting process, Jira? A lot of familiar names, but you never know. Thank you, Stray. Okay, I'm going to try it on voice because I'm not handy with my typing on the moment. I can hear you, dear. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you. What it is is uh, we are breeders of stray cats and we love our LEs and our cats. But if I read the toss, I can't find anything about how it is for a random drop. Is that normal possible, or do we have to find another way to get the LEs to our customers? What Radier is referring to, if you don't mind me speaking up, uh, I'm the actual scripter for the Stray Cats breeders. Nice Thank you. It's nice meeting you guys. Um, okay. this, I've been in Second Life on my main account for, for 18 years this month. Holy and, wow! Holy wow! <laughs> so it's 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 uh, nice to see, and this is my first meeting, so it's it's nice seeing uh, some Lindens. Well, welcome to the meeting, you guys. Long time um, listener, first caller. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um, what she's referring to is we we recently made a change because there's been a uh, some uncertainty about uh, violating the TOS with our random drops. We we have uh, breeders that breed cats together and during the holidays we uh, offer like uh, a Valentine's Day cat. But we're not sure if that's considered, uh, if that falls under the random gaming 
uh, portion of the TOS. So we had to make a, a change, and some of our breeders are upset. Some of them are happy. We just don't know what we need to do, and we can't figure out where to go to find out what we can and can't do. Governance for just linked in uh, the gotcha policy. I would uh, take a look over that and just make sure that that doesn't apply, or well, if it does apply, that you take that into consideration. We have, and and it's we just can't seem to get clarity. Um, so we've made the change, and and like I say, some of our breeders are unhappy, some of them aren't, but um, the we we just can't seem to pin down what might be allowed and and i've asked I've, i filed a support ticket and i understand support oh, okay. support they I, i'm sure are overwhelmed and, see, by the way. and they can't they can't in fact they said they can't um answer legal questions so but it kind of leaves us in a uh, uh, black hole if you will we we don't know what to do so we've got some breeders here today and we just kind of wanted to touch bases and see if there was anything we could do to get some clarity um, if you've already sent in a ticket, um, if you can, uh, now we can't prom promise any new uh, answers to what's already been given or new information, but mm -hmm. we can at least escalate it, see if there's anything further we can expand upon, possibly. I would, um, we're, I would we're certainly. We're willing to, you know, take a swing and see if there's anything else maybe that we can add on. Um, so if you want to just go ahead and send Wendy or I, your previous ticket member, um, if you're able to access the ticket, you can reply back with any further information. Uh, I can. What you're trying to do and any kind of uh, feedback you're receiving from other uh, breedables uh, owners. And um, we'll do what we can here to see if we can facilitate any further info. I, I certainly appreciate that. Yes, and I will. I, I will. And I've communicated with Wendy and I appreciate her help. Um, and like was just mentioned, we're really scared right now of doing something wrong because there was some misunderstanding last month and I got banned, which threw our whole community into a tizzy. <laughs> so we're really afraid right now. Um, so we want to make sure we don't do anything wrong. Um, and, and by the way, I'm, we're grateful that my account was restored because now I can support all these, um, all our users. We're still hoping to get our manager back in. She has not been able to get her account restored. We're trying to find, figure out what we can do to make that happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So <clears throat> we appreciate any help we can get from anybody. Yes, well, it, it's, it's a complicated situation. Yeah, it, gaming policy. But she still doesn't know what she did wrong. So... We just want to make sure we don't cause problems. Totally hear you. So I will I will uh, submit that ticket again and see if we can get some more answers and um, appreciate all the help that you guys can give us. Yep. Yeah, um, or you Thanks can too. relay the previous ticket number you had to us, or you can submit a new one if you have any new information to share, and then. Uh, on the side, you can add as a reference the previous ticket number as well. Okay, Thanks. I will do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. And yes, Torque, it was because of the random rewards, but th th it's, it's unclear if it's considered a purchase because the the breeders don't pay to participate. So I will I will address that in, in the support ticket. If you go to have a look at Man Cave event, they've got several of what used to be catchers and they now have like a like a ball that drops down and it shows you what you're buying now and what you'd buy next. So essentially if in three purchases time you get the thing you want you have to make three purchases but that seems to be a way of um dare i say circumventing no uh, there seems to be a way <laughs> that keeps everyone happy don't you thank you for that suggestion i may do that i 
Thanks, Lucy. Yeah, preview vendors. Yeah, that that's that would be the way round it, wouldn't it? I think. I also participate using another avatar in uh, a charity event each fall, the SOS uh, Spoonful of Sugar Festival for uh, Doctors Without Borders. And there's been some, you know, some concern about we've had to make some changes in the scripting for uh, we can't use gotchas anymore. So yes, I think everybody's trying to find a way around that situation and not get in trouble. <laughs> Well, there are ways with, with the gotcha situation. There's ways of making changes. But breedables are kind of a different situation. That's one way of doing it. Well, we had a lucky chair in our store and we picked that up too. We're just, we didn't want to risk it. Yeah, exactly. There's no payment method with a lucky chair. So a lucky chair would not be considered a problem? The thing is, that's really a governance question. Uh, land and concierge really can't make that determination. Okay. I understand. So have any of you guys heard any of the rumors uh, yet about the Newbrook homes? The new Linden homes? Oh, really? What you got for us, Izzy? They're, uh... <laughs> Gee, Vix, just set me up there. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want more? I, that was all I was going to give. <laughs> no, um, I think it's kind of like a expansion on tiny homes, but also uh, having looked, it's kind of, it's very interesting neighborhood uh, type of a setup. So um, I'll, let me get you guys a link for what we've got so far. Of course, the main one is posted by somebody else because, you know, we, we're uh, always trying to kind of go a little slower and a little slower and then somebody else gets a little uh, clue about it and jumps on it. But So I'm going to hold back since our blog post isn't actually put there. But if you do a Google search on Second Life Newbrook and that's N-E-W-B-R-O-O-K-E. You will see a whole bunch of video and whatnot done by fellow residents uh, that I think you'll probably love. Um, there was a little preview uh, that was done around the uh, winter events and such, but um, I think you guys are going to like it. Um, 
one person's definitely uh, or said uh, it was kind of container home esque. I don't know if I'm exactly on that. Maybe prefab might be the better way to call it, but I, I really do like the community setup for them. Uh, kind of going back to where the Victorian and uh, original um, homes were there, uh, and more of detail on the actual neighborhood itself. So I'm kind of loving that. Yeah, I really like what I've seen of them overall. They're, I wasn't sure I was going to like them when I first spotted them, but uh, after a time, it's like, no, these are really cool. I like the the, the details, the features. Well, and it gives so an I, almost other country uh, aspect yeah. to it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, Catherine, I always suggest that people either have a fee or some requirement uh, for getting into groups, uh, because if you leave it just open to any, inevitably somebody will be unhappy with something that happened in the group and create a <clears throat> refer account or something. So I always recommend that you keep some kind of a control. Is there a policy on refunds for group joins? If you reach somebody out of the group, do you have to refund them? I've yeah. never heard anybody tell me that there was a policy for that. Um, the yeah, thing I would is, add. Oh, God, so much of it's buyer beware. Like, even if you, like, let's say you have a private island and you um, sell land to somebody and they do something you don't like, so you boot them. We don't have a policy saying that you have to, you know, give them back. Now, I will say that our governance team, and correct me if I'm wrong, governance, um, but our governance team does watch where if you're habitually being reported for that kind of behavior, they might investigate more deeply to make sure that somebody isn't just trying to develop money by kicking people out and such. Um, but buyer, to be, buyer beware and considering a lot of those things resident to resident is kind of the default. Yeah, and the question of uh, seeking refunds for group joins, as uh, Lucia pointed out, that would be under our resident to resident uh, dispute. We have a page, I'll go ahead and link it, that uh, we're, since we're not a party to any in world agreement, uh, we cannot intervene or reimburse for those types of fees. Absolutely. And Torek, in things like that where you have a question, I always say put something in your uh, covenant uh, that just basically says something like not responsible for refunds if you violate our terms and get kicked out or leave early or, you know, something like that. Just a CYA. Oh, I agree, Torek. Um, eventually, I expect yours to go, okay, view this link for page one, this link for page two, this link for page three.
Lucy, I can answer that. More than likely, yeah. Um, no, more than likely, what happened is they were premium, went up to the uh, max number, um, and then downgraded back to basic. What will happen is they'll no longer be able to uh, join any other groups until they're down under the basic limit. When you go down to basic, it doesn't just dump a random number of uh, groups or anything like that. And unfortunately, I have to go back to the reminder of yes. And if they said that, I could probably go in there and disprove it. But of course, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Torek, chances are there was uh, an account that may have been deactivated or otherwise changed that you're not seeing on the group. Um, but it's still showing as a member. Um, if you want to go ahead and file a ticket, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at that group and see if we can help you on that. Thank you. Zanzibar, I love that possibility, but a lot of people then uh, complain about the Linden Lab plant, so I don't know um, how that would go, but it's a neat idea. So, Lucia, there is a handy uh, limits page that we have out there here I wanted to share. And it has a ton of helpful advice. Um, and one of them is uh, the maximum number of groups you can belong to. One of them, uh, 42 right now is for basic and 70 for premium accounts. So there is no uh, change from premium to content accounts uh, in related to groups. But I also want to say, I don't think I have before, I'm always referring back to this list uh, that we do try to keep regularly updated. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, spec data um, that you can find here, um, terraforming limits, um, altitudes, anything from gestures, to inventory, more on land. Um, it's really quite helpful if you want to get down to the nuts and bolts of uh, uh, the limits of Second Life. And Catherine, as far as why there is a limit, actually groups are somewhat... Um, server intensive uh, in, in what can be done because it's not just chat. Uh, there's a lot of land type things that can be used uh, involved with a group also. So I think that's the predominant reason why uh, they're limited. Yes, uh, there is, uh, if we're talking generally, um, concierge residents or landowners will have a dedicated uh, concierge line that they can reach. As far as Lucy, as far as like additional groups or anything like that, no, not with concierge uh, versus premium or basic. No problem, Lucy. The basic yeah, way that I fine. explain it to people is there's really two types. There's uh, basic accounts and premium accounts, and a concierge account is really a treated as a premium account um, with that extra phone number. 
Hmm. Yes, and the little foreshadowing that Wendy's throwing out there. Gotta mention that premium plus. Yeah, if you're going That's from a, uh, a basic resident to a concierge, you'll notice that you also have uh, access to live chat. So as Lizzie mentioned, you do pick up some of the uh, premium uh, benefits. And if any of you have any questions about Premium Plus, absolutely don't uh, hesitate to ask Wendy about it. She's here to talk about that. And my response will be, I don't know. <laughs> I actually, honestly, I do not. I don't have any, I don't even have any real internal information on it. I just know that it's coming. I can speculate, but that's about it. Yes, but you end up with really big feet torque. 1024 by 1024 feet, one for each Linden home. So we'll open up the uh, rest of the meeting, the questions. Uh, we have exhausted our topic. So anything you got going on, um, let us know. The floor is open. I'm pretty certain the floor is still uh, uh, is non phantom, so I don't know if it's open or not. Aloha. Uh, I had a question actually. Ask away. Uh, so uh, I've noticed that on the mainland there's a lot of land that isn't technically abandoned, but everything but in name. So, like, the owner hasn't logged in for more than, like, in some cases, also almost a decade. It, and. Filing a ticket to try and mark it as abandoned land tends to result in like it being denied under the the guise that this land is still being paid for, but it's still just sitting there doing nothing. And like, there's other people who would be willing to use it and you know build upon it and pay for it. But like, I, is, is there any mechanism that I am aware of that you are aware of that could be used for that? I can definitely uh, answer on this oh, one. Um, one of one of the big things, Sam, especially, and I'm so glad that you're asking me this question, not about a specific uh, uh, parcel, so I can be a little more broad in my response. If an account that pays for like an annual membership and only owns a 1024, so doesn't have any um, monthly mainland tier fee, uh, is still paying that annual, even though they don't log in, there really isn't anything we can do to about taking that land away from them. Technically, they still own it and they're still paying for it. Um, once they don't pay for it, Obviously, we can, but unfortunately, when you ask about it, we can't tell you, oh, this is an annual who hasn't logged in in a year, uh, so we expect it to go uh, delinquent soon, or uh, this is somebody who's actively using that land just on an alt or whatever. We can't give out that kind of information. So the best thing that I can tell you there is you need to just kind of watch uh, the parcel and see um, if it actually does switch over to abandon. Um, as, if it has an actual person's name on it, uh, it's unlikely that it's something that will be able to go ahead and switch over. Um, if it's got a group name on it, you actually have more of a likelihood because if it's got a group name, we can look and maybe the group's gone defunct, just hasn't had the land reclaimed yet. Um, although that we have a natural process that would take care of it, but sometimes it's a little behind. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't really, like I said, in the case of a avatar owned land give much more information other than that the account that owns it's still in good standing. I know that's a weak answer, but because of the fact that they are technically still paying for it, we're kind of stuck with uh, how we can handle it. But I hope that helped answer your question. It, it helped me enough. Thank you very much. Anytime. Any 
Any other questions or comments uh, out there? I have another question, actually, about uh, true, Premium Lucia. Plus. Sure, Vix will handle your Premium Plus question. Uh, hmm. Is there any estimate of what the pricing of that would be yet, yeah, or no? We don't have mm -hmm. any, any information uh, as far as details. Um, this is part of the story where we would uh, recommend following our featured news page. Um, if you are not already because anything um, new and happening, um, everything from you know lab gab destinations, uh, email changes, uh, security enhan enhancements, it goes on our featured news page. And um, if you are signed up for it, you will be um, the first to know of everything that's happening. Um, so when basically uh, when we know, uh, will be the same time uh, you guys will know. I know that's probably not the best answer to give, but it is the the only answer uh, we have. The only thing I can add to that is that I know that it's still going through some active development and tweaking uh, on what it's going to offer. So that's why we don't really have any information to give out because it's still changing. Yeah, once it's solidified, we're ready to, to talk about it. We'll talk about it here definitely in detail once we have the details. So we're looking forward we to get the inside scoop. You guys. Shout it from the rooftops. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Lucy, that's what I um, was just asking. We don't have a price yet. Exactly, Lucia. It's 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 still very much uh, in process at this point, so there's not a lot of information we have, but we will soon. Trademark. Park, do you mean something like an open space region or something else? Well, I suppose it comes down to open space again, doesn't it, really? But yeah. Um, I've Remember, got, I mean, those I've are got... still available, Torek. I mean, so homesteads, it's just that I just think it would be nice to be able to tidy it up on the map because no one wants an odd number, do they? Well, unless, <laughs> unless you're not so sort of like hell-bent on it being tidy like I am, but I mean, I would like to be able to put something down that just tidies the map up. And just for clarification, why is it that you want something different than what an open space offers, just so I can understand the difference? Only because you get scalped if you try and buy an open space, because everyone knows you don't make them anymore. We actually do uh, offer, if you submit via a support ticket, you can actually get an open space still. You can? Oh, since when did that change? Um, about a year or so. Yeah, it's not something that we advertise out publicly. Um, I mean, it's not a hidden secret or anything. We're just not, you know, blasting it out there. Hey, and it's not on the uh, website or the land store. But yes, you can submit a support ticket to get an open space again. Right, and how much?
much are they? How much are they, is the monthly on them? I believe the month. I believe it's ninety nine setup fee and sixty dollars a month. But let me just double check that. Xanabar, I love your idea, by the way. We are constantly fighting uh, sim surrounds. Uh, while they're, I think some of them look really, really nice. Uh, they can also just create havoc in a region. So if there was a way that uh, we could generate that organically through the region itself, um, I think it would be much better off. I love seeing stuff outside of the region. So I've always been a fan of uh, the sim surrounds and all the, uh, the texture and artwork that goes through it, especially with the uh, descriptive waterfalls. Um, I don't like seeing like a sharp edge to my region. <laughs> I like just seeing it going on. It's a very nice illusion, but it's, it is a prim that is sitting on the outskirts of the region and doesn't behave properly most of the time. Yes, especially when people try to sit. You can script it so that it could sit off the region, but it's not simple. Well, also, I mean, some a lot of times those sim surrounds will affect everybody's ability to sit um, because every once in a while when the region's having a little bit of trouble, it suddenly thinks that there's a solid object throughout the whole region. Right. Yes, Lucia, but I know you've been around here long enough to know that everything that's been fixed will every once in a while pop its uh, head out. That's true. I, I didn't want to hear about that rubber banding. <laughs> right, exactly. Dantia, try picking it up and even just putting it directly back down, and sometimes that'll fix it. Although, oh, resort ahead, first. Yeah, Torque, uh, go ahead and submit a uh, support ticket uh, with your request for the uh, open space, and we will definitely go ahead and escalate that to uh, land to review. I might even be the one to deliver it. We're just about out of time today. Any last questions or concerns? Um, I had one last question, actually. Go for it. I've seen private regions being attached to the mainland. Is there any, like, official policy written down about, like, going about doing that? Because I've seen it done, and I'm just curious about the process myself. The only private islands that I've seen attached to the, um, uh, would be, like, communi uh, community gateways. Um, I don't believe that there's any other, like no uh, random uh, private island owner can go ahead and just attach to the uh, mainland. Uh, I know of one that I don't think fits that bill. It's named uh, Tulagi and Guadalcanal. Is that the tip of the Giagat Gulf? Yeah, that's uh, part of the community. Uh, oh, okay. My apologies. Yeah, no, no quite worries. Right. It's, it's not something that is all that not known about. I mean, Again, it's not something that we hide or anything like that, but we just don't, you know, blast about it. Uh, but yeah, that's a community gateway. And they actually have like very, very strict requirements for what they can and can't do uh, that have certain metrics they have to meet and all that kind of stuff and uh, basically be enhancing things in some way. <laughs> I have a follow-up question, actually, now that you've uh, brought something up. Um, is there any method for reporting a, a community gateway for failing to be a, you know, a good representation of the Second Life or something like that? 
I would start with an abuse report for what they're doing in world. Um, if there's anything that violates like community standards or our terms of service or anything like that. And if there's enough of that, the governance team would definitely involve the people that deal with community gateways in so that can evolve uh, that way. But if it's just more shady, not representing second life, well, I would do that via a ticket, but make sure that you mention that it is a community gateway and what they're doing and such. Um, also understand that if it's, uh, he said she said situation there isn't anything that we can do to action that um, so make sure that you've got whatever proof that you need and like governance said make sure that you're very detailed on uh, what it is that's actually happening because that's the kind of situation where if it's up to interpretation we can't act until we have proof okay thank you very much you have been incredibly helpful we aim to please And with oh, that sure note, it's about that's, time. That's why I ban your account all the time. Oh, no. Uh, I knew it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. This was a great meeting. Here, yes, here. it was. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you very much for all the questions. Uh, love the participation. Uh, we'll see you guys next month. Yep. Take care, all. Thank you very much, Linton. See you next time. Oh, sorry, Chris. Yeah, we get started running the dot at uh, 12 p.m. Second Life time. I'll go ahead and post um, our uh, user group meetings. So you have the, the cups uh... change next month. Oh, do they? It should still be 12 o'clock Second Life time. That doesn't change. But it might change in your local area. And this is the concierge and main group we meet every fourth Wednesday of the month. That'd be great, Dante. Yep, yeah, spread the word, please. See you, Twerk.